Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today, I'm going to run a demo of our platform, MotiveBase. I'm going to start with obviously defining what, what it is that MotiveBase does. Well, it's an AI anthropologist, and it allows us to decode the subtext or the hidden meanings or the implicit meanings that people inadvertently and naturally associate with topics, trends, and ideas in culture. It basically performs an observational big data ethnography on the fly. And I'm going to run that for you right here. And uh, today I'm going to run it on a topic that is relevant to everybody right now, which is sustainable packaging. So right here, as you can see, I just ran an on the fly big data ethnography. It takes about three or four seconds and the results pop up pretty much instantaneously. The technology does a lot, including tell us or give us all the breadcrumbs of meaning that people associate with the topic, sizes the culture, tells us about maturity, identifies the sociodemographics, gives us the ethnographic DNA. I'm gonna go through all of these pieces, but before I do that, I wanna start with the foundational piece here that we call our cultural analysis, because this will help you understand what is it that makes MotiveBase so unique? What you're seeing in front of you are topics, in essence, meanings that people naturally associate with the topic of sustainable packaging. And when I say people naturally associate, how do I know that? Well, the way we know that is by scraping the broader context of discussions that consumers are having. And the time frame here of the data is one year, going back one year around sustainable packaging. But the key word here is the broader context, because when we were building this technology, we realized that we had to actually teach this technology to act like a human anthropologist would if I was observing a dinner table conversation among a group of people about sustainable packaging. And I'll tell you why, because you know, person A may start the conversation by mentioning the word sustainable and packaging, but the way person B and C may respond they may never use those words or even synonyms related to that, but they're still responding in context. They're still giving meaning to what sustainable packaging means or is or how it's relevant to people in their lives. That's what I mean by the broader context. We realized when we were building this technology that we had to teach our AI engine to understand that even when people are responding without using the specific words, they are actually responding in context and if they are responding in context, then to consider the words that they're using because it's all giving meaning to what sustainable packaging means in the end. And so our technology has this thing we call contextual intelligence. It understands, for example, in a forum discussion with a thousand responses, it understands that 800 of them are in context and 200 of them are out of, out of context because, I don't know, people went on tangents talking about politics or something about you know, their kid or what their kid did the night before and so on and so forth. So that contextual intelligence is critical because it allows us to spread the net wide, examine the broader contextual discussions happening around the topic of sustainable packaging, and then figure out which meanings, which words, which meanings are most relevant to the consumer. And how do we determine that based on obviously the nature in which people associate topic A to topic B, C, and D, both in terms of volume and frequency and so on and so forth. So what you're seeing here is basically an outline and there's, there's no intervention. This is unadulterated. This is, you know, all the words and all the meanings that people naturally organically associate with sustainable packaging, with the culture of sustainable packaging, just through the organic conversations that they have every single day. Now, each of these topics, and I'm not going to be able to go into that for the purpose of this demo, but each of these topics serves as a breadcrumb when a user is using our tool to do a deep dive ethnographic analysis. They're actually using each one of these as a breadcrumb to explore what that means in context and understand its relationship to the underlying search term and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into that today. But what I will tell you is that because we can understand the broader context and build this contextually relevant model of data or, or this system of meaning, we can then run calculations that otherwise, as an anthropologist, you know, I, wouldn't, I couldn't even dream of doing things like that even five years ago. But now we can do that, which is we can tell you that sustainable packaging as a topic is relevant to a max of 
36 and a half million American consumers to it. So this is US data we're looking at. I can also tell you where it sits in its relative maturity. So maturity is basically telling us how consistently or inconsistently a particular topic is understood. So the more mature topic is, the more its meanings converge toward one another. What I mean by that is the less diverse these meanings are in the culture, the more mature the topic becomes. The more diverse the meanings are, the more immature the topic is. And, and the theory behind that is very simple. We didn't come up with this, by the way. I mean, the field of social sciences, uh, especially academics in the last hundred years have come up and understood all of these concepts. And it's quite simple that, you know, cultures that are, uh, you know, very diverse in meanings are cultures that are immature. They are misunderstood or there's no consistent understanding or agreement of what that thing is. In this particular case, we can see that approximately 22% of our population of 36 and a half million consumers agree on what sustainable packaging is and what it means to them in their lives. That's basically what that means. Now, the bigger thing though, is the reason we track maturity is we have discovered over the years by benchmarking work that our clients put into market that there is a sweet spot in if you want to achieve mainstream relevance with an idea or with you know something you're putting into market then you need to make sure that that culture falls between 33 and 55 percent on the maturity curve if it does we call it our zone of innovation so that that's why we measure maturity to determine whether what we're trying to do in a particular culture is it too nascent or too late is that or is a culture just right and right for innovation the other thing we're also able to do, for example, in this case, is it's showing us that this culture actually isn't growing. As you can see here, it shows us that, and I'm going to annotate here, this culture is volatile. What does that mean? It basically is telling us that these meanings around sustainable packaging, they're not consistently converging over time. So it's basically telling us that sustainable packaging, broadly speaking, is hitting a bit of a ceiling. It's volatile. People are not agreeing as to what it is and what it means to them in their lives, but not to fear. There is something within the culture of system of packaging, or there is something that we will discover that does offer growth opportunity. And I'll show you an example of that just in a second here. But before I do that, I want to show you some other, some other, um, some other cool outcomes of the technology which is that it also gives us the detailed sociodemographics. It indexes it against national averages. In this case, for example, I can see that sustainable packaging is a topic that over indexes on the middle class in particular single people, people without children. Uh, it over indexes on the young population under 44. And I can also see what kinds of motivations, attitudes, fears, and values intrinsically drive the consumer. So this is our AI engine acting like an anthropologist, decoding the constellation of meaning that we have just fed it on the fly on sustainable packaging. And it's telling us why somebody cares about this. So for example, we can see that, you know, these are people who want to make a difference by living more responsibly. Uh, their biggest fear is not making a difference or being seen as being hypocritical. They believe in environmental protection. They want to buy locally. They want to use their wallets to drive positive change and so on and so forth. So you can see and learn a lot about and build empathy for the underlying user without ever having to talk to them. In fact, this is even more powerful because we are scraping the information that people are naturally, but through their own volition, sharing and, and, and engaging on. Plus the sheer volume of data helps us ensure that there's no stone left unturned. So for example, this ethnography comes from more than 487,000 unique individuals in the United States. That's an incredible richness in data set. Uh, and that allows us to make sure that, you know, we're not leaving anything on the table. Now, let me show you an example of, we talked earlier about how this is volatile. I want to show you an example of something in this arena that isn't, that's offering growth opportunity. So you can see here, biodegradable packaging is showing up. Uh, again, I'm going to annotate. Uh, biodegradable packaging is showing up as an as one of the meanings that is closely related to sustainable packaging. So we saw early, earlier that sustainable packaging wasn't growing, but let's see if biodegradable packaging is, because sometimes that those kinds of things do happen. So let's do that, biodegradable. 
There we go. So I'm going to run that search here live and we're going to take a look. Uh, it'll take three or four seconds and lo and behold, you're going to find that interesting biodegradable packaging actually is growing. It's actually relevant to less people at the moment, but it's going to grow and it's going to overtake the, the, the relevancy of sustainable packaging uh, and um, is continuing to mature. It's pre-zone of innovation, so it doesn't have mainstream acceptance just yet, but it is growing in relevancy in the next 12 to 24 months. So this is what I mean by helping us decode culture and decode meaning because the meanings around biodegradable packaging are clearly significantly different than the meanings around sustainable packaging. And for whatever reason, and we have to figure that out by you know, following the breadcrumbs and clicking through on it and understanding it, but for whatever reason, biodegradable packaging has more opportunity in the marketplace than sustainable packaging. And of course, you know, we're just scratching, barely scratching the surface of what this thing is capable of doing. But the reason I say that is because this is what sets, sets us up to then explore these cultures and understand the nuanced differences and help us determine where we can play depending on the categories that you know, matter to our businesses. Because the technology is extremely flexible in the sense that you know, I just ran a search on obviously sustainable packaging. I can add an industry context to it. I can add cleaning to it or food to it and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of ways to slice and dice the different cultures, decode the meanings and quantify those meanings and predict future outcomes. And it really does or takes the you know, futures work that we have been used to doing to a whole other level uh, in terms of giving us the necessary metrics so that we can make better informed decisions and make them with greater agility and greater speed, of course. Uh, at the front end of innovation in particular. And that's where we tend to play the most. And um, the way we tend to work is that uh, our clients get access to our technology. We train them to use the system, but we also support them with our PhD anthropologists who can do detailed ethnographic analyses for them using the same technology. So the same queries that our clients run, our researchers run as well. The main difference, of course, is that uh, our researchers have the luxury of spending time and energy and can decode the culture of sustainable packaging, break it out into its component microcultures, quantify each of those microcultures in the context of a particular business problem and help the client figure out uh, what to prioritize and why and so on. So that basically concludes uh, our uh, demo. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is ujwalujwal at motivebase.com. You can also just uh, click the con on our website and reach out to us for further questions. Thank you for listening.